Intel's Core Ultra 200S series has finally arrived, and with it brings a slew of changes that makes this a huge departure from past Intel chips. For starters, they've gotten rid of hyperthreading, a technology used in Intel CPUs since 2002. And that's why when you look at specs, they come with the same number of threads as cores, yet they still do amazing in multi-threaded workloads, not to mention their massive reduction in power draw. Basically, there's a lot to like about Intel's next generation of CPUs. CPUs. And luckily, they sent over a couple of their new chips, so a thanks for that. Either way, today I've got the first four things you need to do with your new build. And if you haven't picked up your CPU yet, I'll have affiliate links down in the description below. They don't cost you anything more, and it helps the channel out. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up on the list, we have BIOS power settings. If you haven't kept up with the issues surrounding Intel's 13th and 14th gen CPUs, well, they've been dying. Intel has confirmed that the root cause boils down to vMin shift instability. This causes higher voltages that ultimately damage CPUs. It seems a lot of it has to do with Intel's microcode, but if the motherboard power delivery settings don't request higher voltage, it could have prevented at least some of it. Luckily, they have since released a fix for those who haven't already had stability issues. Either way, I bring all of this up to say that I strongly suggest using Intel's preferred power profile. Specifically, in the reviewer's guide, Intel suggests using the performance profile for the CPU's PL1 and PL2 values. Luckily, Intel claims that the motherboard should default to this power profile. So it sounds like they're starting to rein in motherboard vendors' ability to include wild over-the-top profiles, at least by default. Regardless, I would still suggest making sure your board is actually set to the right profile. To do that, head into your BIOS, find out where your power profiles are in your particular motherboard's BIOS. Mine is the ASRock Z890 Tai Chi, and my power profiles are under OC Tweaker and Power Delivery Profile. Now, now, you may need to update your BIOS because the version that came with the board didn't seem to have them, or at least I couldn't find them. Also, mine is apparently called Intel Default Mode instead of Performance Mode. The way to tell is to make sure that your PL1 and PL2 are either 159 watt for the Core Ultra 5 SKUs or 250 watt PL1 and PL2 for the Ultra 7 and 9 SKUs. As long as you stick to that, you shouldn't have any issues, at least according to Intel. Oh, and a big thanks to ASRock for sending this over, I wouldn't have been able to do these videos without it. Also, Arctic for their fantastic Freezer 3 AIO coolers. These are probably some of the best coolers out there. Next up, Intel's Application Performance Optimization, or APO, is back. Remember that APO launched with 14th Gen, and it's where Intel tweaks the CPU to make it run better for specific games. Intel actually states in the reviewer's guide that APO specifically works around scenarios where games, quote, perform incomplete or invalid detection of core cache topology, produce too many threads such that performance is degraded via thread contention, or depart cores that may not be necessary for performance and power reasons, thus elevating performance. And all of this gives games between 3 and 15% more performance, and Intel recently added support for 12 new games. So it's basically free performance. And to get it, you need to make sure Windows has installed it by checking the CPU in Windows Device Manager. If there's a yellow exclamation, it means you don't have the Windows driver yet, because it should be enabled in BIOS by default. Once that goes away, you can install the Intel application optimization app in the Microsoft Store. This will ensure everything is turned on. If some are grayed out, there's likely something in your system that hasn't been validated. You can click Advanced Mode and turn those games on, but Intel doesn't guarantee it will add any performance and it could cause issues. The third thing you need to do is look at your memory. Intel technically supports up to DDR5-6400, and Intel used 6400 for all of their benchmarks. The issue is that it only officially supports it when using CUDIM. For those who don't know, CUDIM is a new type of memory that adds a clock driver to the memory itself, so the CPU isn't driving the clocks. This is done to help with stability at higher clocks. The issue is that it's a brand new standard, and there really aren't many sets out there right now. With that said, it does 
doesn't mean you can't use regular memory to get to 6400, but Intel technically only supports regular QDIMMs up to 5600, meaning anything over that, including XMP profiles, is considered an overclock, and using it may void your warranty. With that said, Ryzen 9000 only supports up to DDR5-5600, and they suggest 6000 as well, which also can void your warranty. So Intel isn't doing anything out of the ordinary here. In fact, it's nice that they do officially support it up to 6400 with QDIMMs. The question is whether you're willing to take the risk or not. If you understand the risks and still want to overclock your memory, I suggest heading to your motherboard's BIOS and using whatever XMP profiles your memory supports. And finally, there are quite a few changes to overclocking in these new chips, so you've got to try it out. With that said, while I do love to overclock and think people should try it, I take zero responsibility for any damages caused when doing it. Just keep in mind that it can void your warranty and anything too wild can kill your CPU. Either way, the first change is that Intel now allows dual base clocks, meaning separate base clocks for the compute tile and the SOC tile. They also allow you to control the clocks of the die-to-die -die interconnect between the compute tile and SOC tile. But the big news here is that the new architecture allows much more granular overclocking, similar to AMD letting you overclock in 25 megahertz intervals, Intel now lets you overclock with steps as low as 16.6 megahertz, so you can squeeze every ounce of juice from your CPU. I personally suggest using Intel's XTU software for testing, and then once you find the best stable clock you can get, put it in your BIOS. With all of that said, Intel's new CPUs are seriously impressive, but to get the most out of them, you want to do a few things. With that said, what are some things you like to do when you first get a new build? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you like the video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And as always, have a great day!